Let me walk you through a professionally created uh, React application. I created this code base for the React job simulator and based it on my experiences on real world projects as well as what I saw around in the community. First, this is Next.js application, as you can see here and here. We have a few different commands here. The first is what you will regularly use on your local machine, npm run dev. This will start the development server and you will see the application like this. Then we have a few build commands. These are for production. This is the linter, ESLint, prettier. Then we have Cypress tests here and just tests, not too many, but a few. And then finally we have a storybook. Storybook uh, looks like this. So you have basically some component documentation. It's also not too much here, but in the React job simulator, you will create more of this. And the Cypress test looked like this. So you can basically uh, investigate the test. Uh, yeah. More on that uh, in a different video. So let's have a look at the code base. As I said, this is the next JS application. So your entry point is in the pages folder. You have a few pages here and then like the general setup of the application in the app and document um, files. Then the folder structure itself is based on the Bulletproof React project. So we have a features driven folder structure. You can see here, this is all uh, based on features, so issues, projects, and UI, where all the general components are. Each feature folder is split into a different subfolder. Uh, the components is the most obvious one. So this is a list of components uh, here in the projects, the same. Then we have the API folder. This is where all the API connection is happening. So we have a hook that uses use query, react from react query. And then we have the types. This is basically our data model. And each issue also contains an index.ts file. This is called the public API. Each component folder also has such an index.ts file. So let's continue with the tooling. First, we have ESLint. ESLint statically checks your code according to a set of rules. We use a very simple rule set here, ESLint recommended. You can also customize your rules with the rules property here. Um, but I won't go into that. I think it's best if you stick to a common rule set. So how does ESLint look like in action? Let's open a random component here. And now we have a few rules that I looked up. For example, var a equals one. This will give you an ESLint error because var is not uh, allowed. You should use let or constant set. So if we use let, a is never reassigned, use constant set. That's another ESLint rule. Next on the list of tools is Prettier. Prettier is a code formatter that helps you keep the appearance of your code uh, consistent. So how does it, that look like? For example, let's add some line breaks here. Here's a problem with the indentation. We could add some um, missing dangling comma and maybe remove this uh, semicolon here. Now Prettier will fix this automatically. It's great if you combine your editor's format on save setting with Prettier. So now I hit save and bam, uh, you can see that the code is consistent. This is especially important for beginners. Like when I see code like this, my eyes actually hurt. So, uh, but I can see that in a lot of junior developers uh, code repositories that uh, indentation and things like this isn't consistent. Next on the list of tools is TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. It adds type checking to JavaScript similar to languages like Java. This means that you have to define if a variable is, for example, of type string or number, as here in this example. It can be really cumbersome to get used to TypeScript at first because it really slows you down at the beginning. But once you get used to it, you don't want to miss the extra safety net. So let's look at an example. We have the projects constant here, and I have no idea what this is. So usually you would have to dig into the project and see how the data is defined. But here we can just type it out. And thanks to the typing, we will have autocomplete here. This is one additional benefit of TypeScript actually. So if we want to access the project's data, we can simply do it like this. Then we can check this is an array 
project. Okay, so let's access the first one. And then what do we want to get? The project ID. Okay, so const ID equals project state. Now TypeScript actually wants us here. So what's the problem? Object is possibly undefined. Okay, that's good to know. So in order to do this, we would have to projects data and then wrap this like this. So now the error disappears. Another advantage of TypeScript is when you update NPM dependencies. Sometimes these have breaking changes and with normal JavaScript, you wouldn't know until the code breaks. But with TypeScript, the type checking would fail and you would exactly know where these breaking changes affect your code. Next on the list of tools is Husky and Lean Staged. So we already talked about ESLint, Prettier and TypeScript. These are all great tools, but you can also combine them and run them together. Husky is a package that allows you to add pre-commit hooks and Lint Staged allows you to run certain commands only on staged files. So how does that work? Uh, I have here the Husky pre-commit file, and as you can see, it runs npm lint staged. And then in the package.json file, we have the lint staged section here. Uh, you can see that ESLint is running on all JS, JSX, TS, TSX files. Then we have TSC files. This allows us to run type checking only on staged files. And we have Prettier, which runs on all of these files. So I can show you how, how this works. Uh, let's again open the issue list. So I already added some problems here. So we have an ESLint error here. We have a TypeScript problem. And then we also have the code formatting issue here. So I'm on a test branch here, code based tool, and uh, we have one file to commit. So let's add this file, stage it. And now git commit dash um, test. So all these tools should run now but TypeScript complains, so let's remove this line. We don't need it. Add the file again, stage the changes, and then commit. And now you can see that the var was transformed into a const automatically by ESLint, and Prettier solved the code formatting issue here. Next on our list are some testing tools. So first, we have Cypress here. Cypress when set up, adds a new folder here and we still all the tests in the integration subfolder. This is what it looks like when the tests have run and they passed. We'll discuss testing with Cypress in another episode. Next, we use just for unit tests. So I only have one test file here. And finally, we have Storybook. Storybook is a tool that you can use to document your components. For example, the simple batch component. Here's the story. In Storybook, it looks like this. So basically, you can have a list of all your reusable components of your application, and your designer can also check them out. You can adjust properties here um, and check if they match the designs. So now that we are done with our tools, let's see how we style the components. In this repository, we use style components with custom CSS. We don't use a UI library like MUI or Chakra, although these might be used in real world projects, obviously. But this is a learning project. And from my perspective, every front end developer should know the basics of CSS. There are also many UI libraries out there and it's unclear which one will be used on your future job. Writing CSS is the most basic skill that you can reuse in every job. And finally, let's have a look at our continuous integration setup. Continuous integration is the practice of frequently merging feature branches into the main branch. Merging feature branches into production also means that you can break the production app at any time. So professional teams usually use some support for this in the form of CI pipelines. In this case, we use GitHub Actions. Here you can see a workflow file. Basically, it just sets up node, checks out our code, it installs all dependencies, runs Linter, Prettier, builds the application, and then uh, runs Cypress tests on the application. So how does that look like in reality? Let's have a look at the issue list again. We can break one of these tests uh, on purpose by changing the name of one of the buttons. So the previous button won't be found because now the text is pref. So let's add this, git commit 
dash am and break cypress. Okay, now git push region and code base tour. Okay, now we push the changes to our remote repository. Let's see how that looks like. But first, let's look at the Cypress test. So on our local machine, as predicted, the previous button cannot be found, and thus Cypress throws an error. How does that look like in the GitHub repository? First, we have to create a pull request. Now the CI pipeline will run here. We can open the details. Now we can see the different steps that are run here. So after a bit of waiting, we can see that the same error also appears here in the CI and the CI pipeline failed. So in our PR, after refreshing, we should see that the checks have failed and we cannot merge this PR. So a CI pipeline built with GitHub Actions can help us to prevent buggy code from being merged into production branches. Okay, this was it for the code base tour. You can find the link to the GitHub repository below the video.